Uncensored, the truth about money. Hello, greetings everybody, welcome. Um, welcome to our first ever episode. Um, this is a show called Censored, the truth about money. In fact, <laughs> we're still undecided on, on the title yet, but that's what we're going uh, we're going for at the current moment. Um, it might change, we don't know, but yeah. So basically, this is a podcast um, about financial education. So we decided to draw ourselves in an ocean of podcasts and start our own podcast. <laughs> um, so I have with me a financial expert, right? Because obviously I'm just the host and I don't really know anything about um, <laughs> anything about finances or money. So that's why we brought in this guy to come and help us, to come and educate us. Um, his name is Tami Madlala. Um, I think he's been in the game for more than 10 years. He'll, he'll correct me. <laughs> more than 10 years, Netam. Yeah, so you, you, yeah, that's just about right, bro. Like, think, <laughs> just about uh, right. <laughs> just about right, yeah. We, yeah so it's 10 years this year, actually. Ten, yeah. yeah, 10 years this year. Just think about it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because we started 2000 and, yeah, 2013, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's been a while, eh? Yo, 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 yo. I was, it's Coco Sanko when I was. Ninja <laughs> Yeke. <laughs> you OG. Ah, no, no. Ah, bro. Ah, well, funny, <laughs> the thing is that you'll never be an expert. Like, you get people who are billionaires and still losing money. So, yeah. we learn every day, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, let's get right into it, Tommy. So, our topic is, what is debt? You know, uh, are you struggling mm. with debt? And what can you do? I know, like... Uh, quite a lot of people, even myself, you know, I'm in debt. <laughs> varsity <laughs> fees, I still owe Varsity, and I owe the gym company as well. <laughs> hey, contracts, eh? Contracts, man. So, yeah, yeah. So, that's our topic for today debts, mm. debts, debts. What can you do to get out of them? And, you know, mm. so I guess mm. first question from my side. I mean, sorry, man, please introduce yourself. <laughs> All right. Um, like as you said, um, you know the the name is Tommy, and yeah. So I've been in the financial industry for yeah, it's about ten years now. Um, this year actually um, moved up, you know, into the <clears throat> industry where we started selling like offshore investments. Um, you know, your you know setting up uh, proper investments for for clients selling corporate benefits. So we've had a taste of, you know, a bit of here and there. Um, like, as I said earlier on, like, we're still learning. We, there's obviously, like, you know, a lot to learn because, I mean, the world is ever-changing. So <clears throat> with that being said, you know, there's monies also that need to, I mean, there's also your financial mindset that also needs to change as well. So, for example, now it's COVID, you know, it's not... The same as last year, where around this time where there wasn't any pandemic or any lockdowns, so obviously things have changed, and you know money habits need to change, um, <clears throat> our financial literacy needs to change, the books need to be rewritten. So yeah, I mean we we we're just here to learn as as much as we are we we are how can I put it the in inverted commas you know the financial advisors. So what is debt? Like if you would like, if you would plainly explain it, like in simple terms, like what what is debt? Mm. So I think um, so. Obviously, debt is how can I put it? Debt is a is a, is, is is a so there's good debt, there's bad debt, basically, right? Sure. Let's start sure. there. <clears throat> so obviously, for us to live, right, um, you need a house, so you get into debt and buying, you know, um, a, a property through whether financing it um, or any other vehicles. Um, if you want, let's say, a car and you can't afford it currently, you know, you go into obviously debt where you can't, I mean, where you can't be able to buy it cash and the certain financial vehicles or institutions that are able to, you know, fund you, you know, that money while you pay them, pay them back with interest. Um, so that is good debt, right? So the good debt is something is is basically debt that you can manage, yeah, you call yeah. It, or expenses that you can manage, yeah, right. And then you have bad debt, right? So bad debt is <clears throat> like what you mentioned earlier on, you know, stuff that is 
is beyond your control now. All right, so now you've signed up, let's say, for a membership for 12 months, COVID happened, you lost your job, and now you are, you know, you owing certain people money. All right, so <clears throat> now that is that, and you can't be able to afford that. So in layman's terms, you know, I can define, you know, them as good debt. Not that debt is bad. So I think we, we just basically have to distinguish between, you know, good and bad debt. So bad debt is basically taking something that you cannot afford at that certain time and then puts you in a, in a worse off situation as you were before. <clears throat> like you need money and you go to the bank, you know, banks will obviously, you know, offer you more than it's what you needed at that time, for example. Um, yeah. You needed 10,000 rand and then they say, hey, Junior, you qualify for 20,000 rand, my brother. Um, and then, you know, excitement hits you, you get into, you take the 20,000 in full and all of a sudden, now you can't pay back the debt. So now that is bad debt. So yeah, in layman's terms, you know, you can simplify it into that. So good debt is something, is debt that you can pay off. Um, and then bad debt is debt that basically you can't afford or you can't manage. And now you need like debt counselors and so forth to assist you. So now if, if like, cause I understand like if you'd go to a bank and apply for a loan, whatever, they obviously, um, they, they, they like look at, they, they see Ruti, are you able to pay this back? Is there ever a point yeah. where they would just let you basically drown in debt? Or if, if, if they see Ruti, okay, cool. Now this is like, you, you, we can't give you any more. Then would they advise mm. you to say, okay, cool. No, man, you, you can't go further than this. Yeah, so, um, so what happens, right? There's something that you call, um, <clears throat> how can I put it, credit scoring. Yeah. So credit scoring, it's, it's weird how the world works. So you need to be in debt for you to get more debt. So what, what institutions do is, so obviously, let's say you're starting out, you have no debt whatsoever, and you, uh, you, just, uh, you just got your, your, your qualification in tertiary, and then you enter the job market, right? And you have no debt whatsoever. Yeah. And so what happens is that at that, at that point, um, they, there's a high chance that you will not, even if you earn well, there's a high chance that you might not be able to qualify for, let's say, a house, for example, because you have no debt whatsoever. So what happens is that <clears throat> you'll have to get into debt in terms of, let's say, getting clothing accounts, um, opening store accounts, you know, having, you know, like, like small, small accounts, uh, cell phone contracts, and being able to pay those, you know, um, on time and properly without missing any or skipping any payments. So then <clears throat> financial institutions like your banks will then go into the central database where they'll look into your, your credit profile, right, or your credit, your credit scoring. And if junior scores well, they'll be happy to give you debt because on their side, obviously, they, it's like a risk that they do. Um, what happens is that if you, now you can't um, afford to pay for your debts, they now put you into debt review where <clears throat> they, they shut down all, um, all access in terms of you um, applying for more debt. So now they say, oh, junior, because you're under debt review, we can't you know, make your situation much worse than it is now by giving you more debt since you can't afford to pay for the debt that you have currently. So yeah. you'll have to basically manage what you have, pay off what you have before we can look into, you know, things of offering you more debt. Yeah, yeah. Now I hear you. So what can I do to get out of debt? So my first thing is that acknowledge that you are in a crisis and look into means of tackling that crisis. So what you do then is that, like, just have a spreadsheet, have all your debts all drafted in one place, right? Um, like, like, as you put, you've got your car, you've got a house, you've got clothing accounts, um, you've got personal loans, and so forth. So what you then need to do is you then need to call those people. Remember, there's still a person behind, the, behind the, that phone, right? And <clears throat> yes, they are doing their job, but they're also willing to listen and structure some sort of payment structure. So if, let's say you're paying 5,000 rand for your car, call whichever financial institution that you've got um, that vehicle finance through, tell them, listen, guys, this is my situation. You know, I've been retrenched or I've had a pay cut. As long as you are paying something towards that, that, that loan, right, or that finance uh, application, 
um, they'll be able to basically not put you, let's say, under debt review. So as long as you are, <clears throat> you are showing that, listen, guys, although I don't have much, or I don't, although I can't pay that 5,000 rand anymore, here's 1,000 rand, or here's 2,000 rand, or 500 rand, if that may be, you know? Um, yeah. So that they are able to say, to, to, to see that, you know, although Junior, yes, he, he is struggling, but at least there is something that is contributing, you know, towards his loan. Second thing is, you know, speak to your, to your credit facility um, offerers and let them, you know, know of your situation. So the most dangerous thing to do is not to pay your debts at all, yeah. right? Or just vanish, you know, change your numbers, <laughs> change location, change everything, change your name and so forth. Because at the end of the day, <clears throat> you still have a profile behind you. Your, your, your name is gold. So you are a brand by yourself. So if yeah. you tarnish that, you know, if you tarnish your name or reputation, um, you basically won't be able to do anything, you know, um, yeah. acknowledge that you've got a mistake, call your creditors, work out the payment structure and honor that payment structure. You know, mm -hmm. um, there's, there's certain debt counselors out there where they consolidate all your debt. Um, and then they, and then you pay them a certain amount, but I don't really advise for someone to do that rather, you know, be your own debt counselor. Mm. So what happens if you are in a situation or a position where you really cannot pay this debt, especially let's say a house bond, is there maybe some sort of mm. assistant that comes from the financial institutions or what happens then? So unfortunately there's no, I know in terms of um, other facilities like your credit cards and your personal loans and vehicle finance, there's a certain insurance that you take out where if you get retrenched, and it pays, it pays, let's say, six months uh, worth of those premiums towards that, 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 um, that, that debt or that loan that you have. Um, when it comes to how, houses, unfortunately, I have not heard of any like, facility that basically pays um, for your premiums um, or installments while you, know, you are being retrenched. So as I said, you know, go to the bank, explain your situation with them, and they could basically say, all right, Junior, since, because I think it takes up to, I think, three months, then they, they go into the process of, you know, repossessing your house. But after speaking to them, um, work out a, situa a system whereby, like, as I said, that as long as you're paying something, even if it's, even if, let's say, your bond um, installment was 10,000 rand, um, somewhere, somehow, maybe try and, you know, give them 1,000 rand, 2,000 rand, just to show that you're not running away, you are here, you're just in a bad situation, but you're yeah. actually offering them something, you know, so that they don't put you in a bad place. But if, let's say it comes to a point where now things are bad, um, now they, they're looking for you, you know, they want to repossess your house yeah. and so forth. My take is this, right? And obviously there's no, <clears throat> there's lots of ways to skin a cat. My thing is if, let's say you're living in a, let's say four bedroom house, you know, maybe consider selling that house if you've been living there for like 10 years. So now obviously you've covered the interest. Now you just, you're squashing bond amount now. So consider probably, you know, selling that house. Um, I know it might take a long time for it to, you know, to, to, to be sold, but at least that might be something to say, all right, I'm selling this house so that I can go into something much smaller. Mm. Um, where I can be able to manage it, you know, by maybe ha doing like side hustles and so forth. Or you can rent out your property, rent out the property, get that rental income, put that money into the bond and maybe get something small with the, with the excess, you know. So there's lots of ways to skin a cat, um, as I said, and lots of ways to basically juggle it out. But if, you know, situations are quite dire and, you know, you can't afford to pay it. You know, I'd say just rent it out and instead of you, you know, losing that house entirely, you know, at least have someone who's paying for the bond and maybe move in with your mother-in-law or your sister or, you know, whoever. Yeah. Just a question. Do, do banks have like, do they, do they give out this kind of services where you would, let's say you, you are banking with a certain bank, can you go there for like financial advice or sort of a thing? So you see, the trick is with financial 
advisory, right? It's it's more of a how can I put it? <clears throat> it's a legislation that you, you that you that you practice. So by me saying that is you write certain tests, you go to that let's say that institution, after writing the test, then they accredit junior in terms of being a financial advisor. So now you can offer intermediary services as well, right? So what happens is that most of the people who, let's say, sell you a house, they cannot, they can't give you advice. So they can only basically just recommend, say, junior, um, here's, you know, they'll assist you in terms of applying for that, for that loan. But if you had to ask them the questions like in terms of, okay, guys, what do I do now when I'm in a situation where I can't pay for this anymore? Um, what is, you know, my, my ulterior or what is my alternatives? So they'll basically tell you that, unfortunately, they can't give you advice. But the, the nice thing about, you know, the time that we're living in, there's so much information out there, but people yeah. you know, are not taking advantage of. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, man. That's it from my side. Um, we do apologize for the audio because we are all at home. It's lockdown level three, so the audio is quite bad. Um, so, Pratamza, that's it from my side. Um, thank you so much. Uh, also, one important thing, you can get this podcast uh, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and Google Podcasts, and it's absolutely for free. So, please do enjoy. Um yeah, we're excited about this to help you out and to educate you in whatever way that we can. Pratamza, anything from your side before we go? Just get out there and, you know, get advice, get help. Um, it's not the end of the world. People commit suicide because, you know, they can't afford anymore. People get depressed and so forth, you know. But yeah. if, you, if you have someone to speak to who can give you a way how, or a you know a workout then you know by all means please do so you know don't put yourself in a box and think that it's in the end of the world there is there are people that can help out and people are more than willing to help out in terms of you know you getting you out of the dark hole that you're in but other than that my man uh, thanks for thanks for hosting me sweet thank you see you next episode <laughs> <laughs>